Hi there, and welcome to Game for Thought, the only show that gives you surprisingly interesting answers to the questions you never cared enough to ask. Today, I'll be covering the subjects of economics and the Legend of Zelda, or to be more specific, what is the real world worth of the rupee? Well, let's start with facts. Technically, in real life, rupees do exist. The rupee is actually the name for the modern form of currency in India. Now, other than sharing a name, the Hylian rupee and the Indian rupee have practically nothing in common. The Indian rupee is paper money, whereas the fictional rupee is represented by different colored jewels. Along with the variation in appearance, there is also a rather large difference in the monetary value. For instance, if you use the exchange rate of the Indian rupee on, let's say, the Hylian shield from Ocarina of Time, it would cost you a simple $1.28 in the US. Another thing we know is that there is no fixed currency in Zelda. In order for me to explain my point, let's take a quick look at the timeline. As you can see, there are three different and branching alternate histories, so there is no now or current time. What does a split timeline have to do with the value of the rupee, or really the economy of Hyrule in general? Well, in order to do anything with currency, we have to know the value of said currency. And due to different events in history of Hyrule, the value of currency will change. This change, or to be more specific, the lowering of worth or purchasing power of a currency is called inflation. So, instead of taking the modern value of the rupee as there really is none, I'm going to find the Zelda game with the most efficient economy and use the rupee values in that for my calculations. After looking around for a while, factoring in things such as a low level of poverty, a wealthy middle class, political stability, and a good trade between villages, I chose Ocarina of Time. Well, Ocarina of Time before Link went and screwed everything up in the Temple of Time and letting Gandorf in and, well, let's just say Reddit's in Town Square, just gonna say this is not make for an efficient economy. Anyhow, getting back on track. Just to quickly define an unstable and, well, for lack of a better word, screwed up economy in Zelda, we can look to the War Ravage 1986 NES Hyrule, which featured overpriced everything, and money that feels less like a currency and more like a random encounter. Not to mention, there literally was no rupee value past 5. So, now that we have the value of one currency, we just need to start the actual process of exchange. This is a bit complicated, but stick with me. First off, let's find a commodity in Ocarina. Hell, let's extend the criteria beyond just Ocarina for this one bit. After all, why not find a commodity that is relevant in all Zelda games? In the end, it would make more sense to use a product that stays strong throughout that crazy twisted timeline. So getting back on track. In order to get the most accurate result, we have to find both a real world item and an item that is used by the many people of Hyrule, has a demand in the market, and can be generally defined as a widespread commodity in Hyrule. And that commodity, drumroll please, is arrows. Well, sort of. You see, in Zelda, the only real big or widespread commodity shown to be used by the masses, for example by the soldiers in Link to the Past, or Zelda herself in the final boss of Twilight Princess, is the standard arrow. Now here is where the sort of comes into play. You see, even though bow hunting is a legitimate and healthy enough business to support the trade of the arrow, you cannot really compare the two. With the arrow in Zelda actually being an important factor in war and the production costs being completely different. You see, in order to find an economic equal to the arrow from Zelda, we need to go back. Nope, further back. Way back. There we go. You see, the arrow was most relevant during Anglo-Saxon times, specifically when the English longbow was especially useful in the 1415 Battle of Agincourt, a crucial victory for England during the Hundred Years' War. Now let's take the price of arrows in Anglo-Saxon times, which was 100 shillings per thousand. Now seeing how 20 shillings is equal to a pound, that would mean that each arrow is worth roughly 0 0.005 US dollars, or half a penny. Now, in order to make a far more accurate exchange, we have to adjust the shilling for inflation. There goes a tricky word again. As said earlier, money changes in value over time due to many factors. So if you adjust 100 shillings for inflation up to the point where shilling was discontinued, 1970 for those of you playing along at home, then we get a whopping 4,400 shillings. Now let's take that value and turn it into the modern US dollar, and as you can see below, several other foreign currencies. Here's something worth making a note of. As you can see, I only adjusted inflation rates on the shilling up to 1970 when the shilling was discontinued, yet I compared the 1970 shilling worth to the 2013 US dollar. As this may be a slight wrinkle in my process, you will see that in the end, all the numbers even out make sense. Thanks! 
Now that we have a modern price for 1,000 arrows in Anglo-Saxon times, let's take the price of 10 arrows in Ocarina of Time, 20 rupees per bunch of 10, and use this information with some simple math on both prices, rupees and USD, to find the value of one arrow in both values. Then we jumble those numbers through the math machine, so to speak, and BAM! We have it. A number. $1.36 per one rupee, which would be 144 in Canada, 0.83 British pound sterling, and 152 in the Australian dollar. Well, that about wraps it up. As always, thanks for watching. All resources used in the making of this video are linked in the description below, and don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out my video game alternate history video I made about a month ago. And don't forget, in order to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe. Recently I passed 125 subs, and I am beyond euphoric. Have a wonderful day, folks.